Welcome to Catholic Culture Audiobooks, the only podcast bringing to life classic Catholic works through professional, high-quality audiobook recordings. Stay up to date with our latest podcast releases by signing up for our newsletter at catholicculture.org slash get audio. Today's reading, The Shepherd of Hermes, Visions, translated by Joseph M. F. Marink, S.J., Ph.D., narrated by James T. Majewski. The Shepherd of Hermes First Vision The person who brought me up sold me to one road in Rome. After many years, I met her again and began to love her as a sister. Sometime later, I saw her bathing in the Tiber and gave her my hand to lead her out of the river. At the sight of her beauty, I thought to myself and said, How happy I would be if I had a wife of such beauty and character. My reflections went thus far and no further. A little later, on my way to Cumi, while praising the magnitude, splendor, and power of God's creatures, I fell into a trance as I walked, and a spirit seized me and carried me through a pathless region where no man could make his way because it was steep and broken into ridges by the waters. So when I had crossed that river and came to level ground, I knelt down and began praying to the Lord and confessing my sins. During my prayers I saw the heavens open, and that woman of whom I was enamored saluting me with the words, Greetings, Hermes. With my eyes fixed on her, I said, Lady, what are you doing here? Her answer was, I have been taken up to convict you of your sins before the Lord. To this I said, Are you my accuser at this moment? No, she said, but you must listen to what I am about to tell you. God who dwells in heaven, the creator of beings out of nothing, he who increases and multiplies them for the sake of his holy church, is angry with you for your offenses against me. For answer, I said, Offenses against you? How so? Have I ever made a coarse remark to you? Have I not always regarded you as a goddess? Did I not always show you the respect due to a sister? Lady, why do you make these false charges of wickedness and uncleanness against me? With a laugh, she said, In your heart there has arisen the desire of evil. Surely you think it evil that an evil desire arises in the heart of a good man. It is a sin, she said, yes, a great sin, for the good man aims at justice, and in this aim at justice his good name in heaven is secure, and he keeps the Lord propitious in every action of his, while those who pursue evil draw death and captivity on themselves, in particular those that reach out for this world and glory in their riches, and do not hold fast to the blessings to come. Their souls will be sorry, for they have no hope. Instead, they have abandoned their selves and their life. As for you, pray God, and he will heal you of your sins, yours, your whole households, and those of all the saints. After these words of hers, the heavens closed, and I sat shuddering and grieving in my whole person. I said to myself, If even this sin is down on the record against me, how can I be saved? How can I win God's forgiveness for out-and-out sin? With what prayer shall I ask God's indulgence? As I was weighing and debating this with myself, I saw before me, a great white chair of snow-white wool. Then there came a lady, advanced in years, in an exceedingly brilliant garment, with a book in her hand. She was sitting alone and saluted me. Greetings, Hermes. In grief and tears I said to her, Greetings, lady. She then said, Why this gloom, Hermes? You are always so patient and slow to anger, 
always merry? Why so downcast in looks and woe begone? My answer was, Because a very excellent lady declares that I sinned against her. Then she said, This does not refer at all to the servant of God. However, the thought concerning her did really enter your heart. For God's servants, such a thought induces to sin. It is a shockingly evil purpose, you know, so far as a devout soul, already tried and tested, is concerned, if there be a desire for evil action, especially Hermas, the mortified, who has abstained from all desire and is full of holy simplicity and great innocence. But this is not the reason why God's anger is stirred against you. Rather, it is in order that you may convert your household that has sinned against the Lord and against you, their parents. Now, because of your love for your children, you do not admonish them, but allow them to fall into dreadful corruption. This is the reason for the Lord's anger, that he will bring a remedy for all past evils committed in your household. Their sins and transgressions are the reason why you have fallen under the corruption of temporal affairs, but the great mercy of the Lord has taken pity on you and on your household and it will give you strength and establish you in his glory. At all events, do not relax, but encourage and strengthen your household. For just as a smith by hammering his work obtains mastery of it for his purposes, so also does the righteous, daily repeated sermon overcome all evil. So do not let up. Admonish your children, for I know if they repent with their whole heart, they will be inscribed in the books of life with the saints. After these remarks, she said to me, Do you wish to hear me read? Yes, lady, I said. Be attentive and hear God's glories. The great and wondrous things I heard I am unable to remember, for all her words inspired fear which no mortal can endure. But her last remarks I do remember, for they were helpful for us and gentle. Behold the God of hosts, who has created the world with his invisible power, strength, and surpassing wisdom, and who in his glorious good pleasure has clothed his creation with beauty and by his mighty word has firmly fixed the heavens and set earth's foundations on the waters, who in the wisdom and providence that is his alone has founded his holy church and blessed it. Behold, he is moving away the heavens, the mountains, the hills and seas, and all is becoming level for his elect to fulfill the promise he made in fullness of glory and joy provided they observe the commands of God which they have received in great faith. Now, when she had finished reading and had risen from her throne, there came four young men who took the throne and went away to the east. Then she beckoned me and, touching my breast, said, Were you pleased by what I read? To which I answered, Yes, lady, the last part pleased me, but the first part was difficult and stern. She answered as follows. The last part was for the just, the first for pagans and apostates. As she was still speaking with me, two unknown men appeared, lifted her in their arms, and went away in the same direction as her throne, to the east. However, she went away with a smile, and turned to say to me, Courage, Hermes. Second Vision While making my way to Cumi at the same time as last year, I recalled, as I was walking, last year's vision, and once more the spirit seized me and bore me off to the same spot as in the past. So when I came to the place... I got down on my knees and began praying to the Lord and praising his name, since he had deemed me worthy of receiving the knowledge of my former sins. On rising from prayer, I beheld before me the elderly lady I had seen last year. She was walking and reading a little book. 
Then she said to me, Can you report this to God's elect? Lady, I said, I cannot remember so many things. Give me the book, and I shall copy it. Take it, she said, and return it to me. So I took it, and went to some part or other of the field, and copied everything letter by letter, for I could not make out the syllables. As I finished the last letters of the book, it was suddenly snatched from my hands, by whom I could not see. After fifteen days of fasting and many prayers to the Lord, the knowledge of the writing was revealed to me. This is what was written. Your offspring, Hermes, have rebelled against God and blasphemed against the Lord. They have betrayed their parents in notorious evil doing. They pass for traitors to their parents, yet their betrayal has done them no good. Instead, they have added still more to their iniquities, dissoluteness, a mass of wickedness. In this way they made full the measure of their lawlessness. Now, Make this message known to your children, every one of them, and to your wife, who in future is to be as your sister. Yes, she also fails to put a check on her tongue, and thus she commits sin. However, after hearing this message, she will control herself and obtain mercy. As soon as you have made known to them this message the Master has commanded me to reveal to you, all the sins that they previously committed will be forgiven. Yes and the saints who have sinned up to this time will be forgiven, provided they repent wholeheartedly and rid themselves of divided purposes. For the Master has taken this oath by His glory concerning His elect. If, after this day has been determined, there is any sinfulness, they shall not obtain salvation. For repentance for the just is at an end. The days of repentance for all the saints have reached their fullness. But for pagans... There is repentance until the last day. So tell the leaders of the church to rectify their ways in justice, that they may fully receive the promises with great glory. Stand firm, then, you who work righteousness and have singleness of purpose, that your entrance may be in the company of the holy angels. Blessed are those of you who will endure the great persecution that is to come, and those of you who will not deny their life. For the Lord has sworn by His Son that those who have denied their Christ have been rejected from their life. I mean those who are on the point of denying in the days to come. However, to those who have denied Him formerly, mercy has been granted because of His great mercy. Now, Hermes, do not hold a grudge against your children any longer, and do not allow your sister to have her way, that they may be cleansed of their former sins. For by just punishment they will be corrected, provided you do not hold a grudge against them. For a grudge is the worker of death. As for you, Hermes, you have had many trials of your own, from the transgressions of your house and your lack of concern about them. Yes, you were absorbed by other matters. You were involved in your own evil doings. However, your refusal to fall away from the living God, your simplicity and your great continence are saving you. This saved you, if you endure, and it is saving all who do the same and who walk in innocence and simplicity. These shall gain the mastery over all evil and are going to stand fast until life everlasting. Blessed are all those who do righteousness. They will not perish forever. Tell Maximus, see, persecution is coming if you decide to deny the faith again. The Lord is close to those who turn to him, as it is written in Eldat and Modat, who prophesied to the people in the desert. Brethren, a revelation was made to me in my sleep by an exceedingly beautiful young man who said, Who do you think is the elderly lady from whom you took the book? The Sibyl, I said. No, he said. You are mistaken. Who is she then? I said. The church, he said. Why is she elderly? I asked. 
because she was created before all things, he said. For this reason she is elderly, and for her sake the world was erected. After this I had a vision in my house. The elderly lady came and asked me whether I had already given the book to the presbyters. I said that I had not. That is well, she said, for I have remarks to add. So when I shall complete all the words, with your help they will be made known to all the elect. Write, then, two small booklets, one for Clement and one for Grapti. Clement will then send it to the cities abroad since this is his duty, and Grapti will instruct the widows and orphans. But you shall read it to this city, together with the presbyters, who are in charge of the church. Third Vision Brethren, this is the vision I had. After much fasting and prayer to the Lord that he grant me the revelation he promised to manifest through the elderly lady, on that very night she appeared to me and said, Since you are so helpless, yet eager to know all, go to the field where, while you are farming, I shall appear to you about the fifth hour and show you what you have to see. Then I asked her a question, Lady, in what part of the field? Wherever you please, she said. I chose a beautiful and retired spot. But before I could speak and tell her the spot, she said, I shall come wherever you please. I was in the field then, brethren, counted the hours, and came to the place where I had told her to come, when I saw an ivory couch placed there. On the couch was placed a linen cushion, and on top a coverlet of finely woven linen was spread out. When I saw these objects thus arranged, and that not a person was in the place, I was amazed, and a shudder, so to speak, took hold of me. My hair stood on end, and unreasoning fear came upon me, because I was alone. When I recovered then, recalling God's glory, I took courage and knelt down. Once more, as on the former occasion, I confessed my sins to the Lord. At this point she came with six young men whom I had also seen before, and they stood by me. As I prayed and confessed my sins to the Lord, she listened. Then she touched me and said, Hermes, cease saying all these prayers for your sins. Ask also for righteousness, in order that you may take some of it to your household. Then she raised me up by the hand and led me to the couch, saying to the young men, Go away and build. After the young men's departure, when we were alone, she said to me, Sit here. Let the elders sit down first, lady, I said. Do as I tell you, she said. Sit down. Then, when I wished to sit down on the right side, she did not allow me, but motioned with her hand to sit on the left. As I was reflecting and brooding about this, that she would not allow me to sit on the right, she said to me, you are sad, Hermes? The place at the right belongs to others who have already been pleasing to God and have suffered for his name. To sit with them, there remains much for you to do. But persist in your singleness of purpose as you now do, and you will sit with them. So also will all who do what they have done, and who endure what they have endured. What have they endured? I said. Let me give you the list, she said. Scourgings, detention in prison, heavy afflictions, crucifixions, exposure to wild beasts for the sake of the name. For this reason, theirs is the right side of the holiness, as for anyone who suffers for the name. The left side is for the rest. But the same bounty and the same promises are reserved for both those sitting on the right and those sitting on the left. Only this difference, that those who have suffered sit at the right and enjoy a certain distinction. Now, you are eager to sit with those on the right, but your shortcomings are numerous. However, you will be purified of shortcomings, 
as will all who are single in purpose. You will be purified of all sins up to this day. With these remarks she wished to go away, but I fell at her feet and besought her by the Lord to show me the vision she had promised. So she took me again by the hand, raised me, and made me sit on the couch at the left, while she sat down to the right. Then she raised a shining wand and said to me, Do you see something big? Lady, I said, I see nothing. Then she said to me, Look, do you not see before you a large tower built on the waters out of shining square stones? Now the tower was being built in the shape of a square by the six young men who had accompanied her, but innumerable other men were bringing along stones, some of them out of the depths of the sea, others from the land, and they were distributing them to the six young men, who were taking them and building. All the stones dragged out of the sea, they were putting into the building just as they were, for they had been shaped and fitted in the joining with the other stones. In fact, they fitted so snugly with one another that the line of contact did not show up. The structure of the tower seemed really to be of one single stone. Of the other stones, those taken from the dry land, some they put into the building, while others were broken up and thrown far away from the tower. But many other stones were lying about the tower and were not being used in the building. For some of them had spots, others cracks, some were chipped and some white and round, unable to fit into the building. Moreover, I saw other stones thrown at a great distance from the tower and coming to the road without staying on it, but rolling into wastelands. Other stones fell into fire and were burned, while others still fell near water and yet were unable to roll into the water in spite of their desire to roll and come to the water. After showing me this, she wished to rush away. I said to her, Lady, what good is it to see and not to know what this means? Insistent fellow, she said, you do wish to know about the tower. Yes, I said, in order that I may tell my brothers, lady, and they may have greater joy and upon this message may know the Lord in great glory. She said, Many will listen, and some will rejoice for having listened, but some too will weep but even the latter, if they listen and repent, will also rejoice. Let me tell you now the parables of the tower. I shall reveal everything to you, and do not importune me any more about the revelation, since these revelations are at an end. They have been fulfilled. Yet you will not cease asking for revelations, shameless as you are. The tower which you see being built, that is I, the church, who has appeared to you now and formerly. So, ask me whatever you wish about the tower, and I shall reveal it to you, that you may rejoice along with the saints. I said to her, Lady, since on one occasion you considered me worthy of the whole revelation, make it. She said, Whatever can possibly be revealed to you will be revealed. Only let your heart be directed to God, and do not doubt whatever you see. Then I asked her, Why, lady, is the tower built on waters? Yes, she said, as I told you before, you do inquire persistently. With your inquiries you are finding the truth. The reason why the tower is built on water is this. Your life has been saved by water, and will be so saved. The tower has been put on a foundation by the omnipotent and glorious word of the name, and it is held together by the Lord's invisible power. In answer I said to her, Lady, this is a great and marvelous thing. But, Lady, the young men, the six, who are building, who are they? These are the holy angels of God, the first to be created, to whom he has committed his whole creation, to give increase and to build and have complete control of creation. By their agency, the building of the tower will be perfected. Who are the others who are dragging along stones? 
These also are God's holy angels, but the former six are superior to them. With their help, then, the tower will be perfected and all together will rejoice around the tower and give glory to God, because the building of the tower has been perfected. I spoke and asked her, Lady, I would like to know what is the destination and meaning of the stones. In answer she said to me, Not that you are worthier to receive the revelation than all the rest of men, for others are ahead of you and worthier, and it would be right for them to have the revelation. But that God's name may be glorified, the revelation has been made and will be made to you. For the sake of those who are doubting, and those who are debating in their hearts whether this is so or not. Tell them that all this is true, and nothing is beside the truth, but thoroughly secure, firm, and well established. Now let me tell you about the stones that go into the building. The square white stones that fit accurately in their joinings, these are the apostles, bishops, teachers, and deacons who walk in accordance with God's reverence by administering with purity and sanctity the office of bishops, of teachers, and deacons for God's elect. Some of them rest in the Lord, and some are still living. Now, they have always been in mutual agreement. They are at peace with one another, and listen to one another. For this reason, in the tower building, their joinings fit accurately. Who are the stones dragged from the sea to be put into the building, whose joinings fit into the other stones already used in the building? They are those who have suffered for the name of the Lord. Lady, please let me know, who are the other stones taken from the dry land? She said, Those going into the building without being cut are the ones the Lord has approved, because they walk in the straight way of the Lord and observe strictly His commandments. Who are those that are brought and placed in the building? They are young in the faith and faithful, but they are reminded by the angels to do good because wickedness was discovered in them. Who are the ones whom they rejected and threw away? They are sinners who wish to repent. Because they will have their uses in the building in case they repent, they are not thrown at a great distance from the tower. Now those who are to repent will be strong in the faith when they actually do, provided they repent now while the tower is in process of building. But if the building has been completed, they no longer have a place and will be castaways. Their only advantage is to be lying close to the tower. Do you wish to know who those are that have been broken up into fragments and thrown far from the tower? They are the sons of lawlessness, their belief was a sham, and wickedness in its fullness has not been wanting in them. Because of their wickedness, therefore, they have no salvation, because they are of no use for the building. Hence they have been broken into fragments and thrown far from the tower, because of the Lord's anger and because they roused him to anger. The many other stones which you see lying around without going into the building are the stones with spots who knew the truth but failed to persist in it and did not cling to the saints. Consequently, they are useless. Who are the stones with cracks in them? They are those opposed in their hearts and not at peace with one another. They have only a semblance of peace, but when they leave one another, discord is still in their hearts. These are the cracks in the stones, the stones that are chipped are believers just for the most part, but a certain portion of lawlessness lingers in them. Hence they are chipped and not perfect in every respect. Lady, who are the white round stones that do not fit into the building? She answered and said, How long are you going to be foolish and senseless? All these questions. Do you not understand anything? They are those who have the faith but also the riches of this world. When persecution comes, they deny their Lord because of their riches and their business. I answered and said to her, Lady, when will they be useful for the building? Whenever riches that lead their hearts astray have been torn from them, she said, then will they be useful to God.
Just as the round stone cannot be made square unless it be cut and lose something, so also the rich in this world cannot be made useful for the Lord unless their riches have been cut out of them. Learn from your own experience. When you were rich, you were useless, but now you are useful and a help to life. Be useful to God, for you yourself have drawn profit from these same stones. The other stones which you see thrown far from the tower, falling on the road and rolling off it into wastelands, are the believers, but in their doubt they have deviated from their true road because they thought they could find a better. So they wander in distress, walking about in wastelands. Those who fall into fire and are burned are the ones who have finally rebelled from the living God, into whose hearts repentance no longer enters because of their unbridled lust and the impious acts they put into execution. Do you wish to know who are the other stones that have fallen near the waters and cannot roll there? They are the ones who hear the word and wish to be baptized in the name of the Lord, but then change their mind when they recall the purity of the truth and return to their evil desires. With this, she finished her explanation of the tower. Unabashed, I asked her another question. All these stones that have been thrown away and do not fit into the tower, is there no repentance and no place in this tower for them? They can repent, she said, but they cannot fit into this tower. They will fit into another place, much less honorable, but only after they have been chastised and fulfilled the days of penance for their sins. But since they have been partakers of the just word, their place will be changed. Then also it will be their good fortune to be relieved of their chastisements if they recall the evil deeds that they performed. But if they do not recall them, they will not be saved because of their hardness of heart. When I ceased asking questions about all these matters, she said to me, Do you want to see something else? Eager as I was to behold, I was overjoyed at the prospect of seeing visions. She looked at me with a smile and said, Do you see seven women around the tower? Yes, lady, I said. This tower is being supported by them in accordance with the Lord's command. Now let me tell you their functions. The first of them, with the strong hands, is called faith. God's elect are saved by her. The second, with the girdle, who looks like a man, is called continence. She is the daughter of faith. Whoever follows her will be happy in his life, because he will abstain from all evil deeds in the assurance that, by abstaining from all evil desire, he will inherit eternal life. Who are the others, lady? They are the daughters, one of the other. Their names are simplicity, knowledge, innocence, reverence, and love. When you perform all the acts of their mother, then you are able to live. Lady, I said, I would like to know what power each of them has. You shall be told. Each has the others, and they follow one another in the order in which they are born. Continence is the daughter of faith. Simplicity of continence. Innocence of simplicity, reverence of innocence, knowledge of reverence, love of knowledge. Their acts, then, are pure, reverent, and divine. Whoever serves them and succeeds in mastering their acts will have a dwelling in the tower along with God's saints. Then I asked her whether the consummation of time had arrived yet, and she cried out with a loud voice, saying, Stupid man, do you not see that the tower is still being built? Whenever the building of the tower is completed, that will be the end. But it will be quickly built up. Do not ask me anything any more. This reminder and the renewal of your souls is sufficient for you and for the saints. Now, this revelation is not made for you alone 
have you make it known to everybody after three days. My command, Hermes, is for you to speak all the words I am about to tell you to the ears of the faithful. Thus, when they hear and do them, they will be cleansed from their wickedness, you along with them. My children, listen to me. I brought you up in great simplicity and innocence and reverence because of the Lord's mercy. He instilled justice into you, that you might be justified and sanctified from all wickedness and all perversity. But you did not wish to desist from your wickedness. Now then, hear me. Be at peace among yourselves. Look after one another. Help one another. Furthermore, do not partake of God's creatures superabundantly by yourselves, but give a share also to those who have less. For some people, from the abundance of things to eat, bring on sickness to their flesh and weaken it, while others, who have not things to eat, are weakened in the flesh from lack of sufficient food, and their body is ruined. So this failure to share is harmful to you who have and fail to distribute to the indigent. Keep your eyes on the judgment to come. Seek out those who are hungry, so long as the tower is not yet finished, you who have a superabundance. For after the completion of the tower, you will be wishing to do good, and will not have an opportunity. Now then, you who pride yourselves on your wealth, take care, lest the indigent groan at any time, and their groan mount up to the Lord, and you and your goods be shut out from the door of the tower. At this point, it is to you, the leaders of the church, and to those in the first seats, that I speak. Do not be like poisoners. They carry their poison in boxes, whereas you carry venom and poison in your hearts. You are hardened, and do not wish to cleanse your hearts. You do not wish to mix together your wisdom in a clean heart, that you may obtain mercy from the great king. Watch then, my children, lest these dissensions deprive you of your life. How do you expect to correct the elect of the Lord if you have no instruction yourselves? Correct yourselves, then, and live in peace with one another, and I for my part may take my stand before the Father and joyfully give an account of you to your Lord. Now, when she finished speaking with me, the six young men who were builders came and took her to the tower, while four others took up the couch also and brought it to the tower. I did not see their faces because they were turned away. As she was going away, I asked her to give me a revelation about the three forms in which she had appeared to me. About this matter, you have to ask another for a revelation. In the former vision last year, brethren, she had appeared to me as very old and sitting on a chair. In the second vision, she had a younger appearance, but her flesh and hair were old, though she had spoken to me standing up. But in the third vision she was youthful in every respect and of surpassing beauty. Only her hair was that of an old lady, and, towards the end, she was quite joyful in sitting on a couch. I was very deeply depressed, because I wished to know the revelation on these matters. Now, in a night vision, I beheld the elderly lady saying to me, Every question requires humility of spirit. Fast, then, and you will receive from the Lord what you ask. So I fasted for a day, and that same night there appeared to me a young man who said to me, why do you ask for instant revelations in your prayer? Be careful lest you injure your flesh by heavy requests. The present revelations are all you need. Can you see greater revelations than those you have seen? In answer I said to him, Sir, I am only asking for a revelation complete in every detail about the three forms of the elderly lady. For answer he said to me, how long are you going to be without perception? 
It is your doubts that make you so, and the failure to have your heart directed to the Lord. Again I said in answer, Well, we shall know this more accurately with your help, sir. I shall tell you, he said, about the three forms about which you are inquiring. Why did she appear to you as an elderly lady sitting on a chair in the first vision? Because your spirits were old and already wasting away and infirm from your softness and divided purposes. For just as old men, without hope of renewing their youth, have no other thing to look forward to except their final rest, so you also, weakened by temporal affairs, surrendered to indifference instead of throwing your cares on the Lord. Yes, your spirit has been broken, and you have grown old with your griefs. Sir, I would like to know why she was sitting in a chair. Because every weak person sits in a chair on account of his weakness, that his weak body might find support. Here you have the meaning of the first vision. In the second vision, you saw her standing, younger in appearance and more cheerful in comparison with the first time, although her flesh and hair were those of an old lady. Now listen to this parable also. When an old man, who has already given up hope because of his weakness and poverty, and waits for nothing more except the last day of his life, suddenly has an inheritance left him, he rises at the news, is exceedingly happy, and gathers strength. He does not lie down any more, but stands up, and his spirit is rejuvenated, though it was broken by his former practices. He no longer sits, but takes courage. In the same way you also were rejuvenated when you heard the revelation which the Lord made to you. Because the Lord has had mercy on you and has made your spirits young again, you put aside your weaknesses, strength returned to you, and you were made mighty in the faith, while the Lord at the sight of your strengthening rejoiced. For this reason he made clear to you the building of the tower, and will clarify other matters, provided you live wholeheartedly at peace with one another. In the third vision you saw her as a younger lady, beautiful and joyous, and her appearance too was beautiful. For a man immediately forgets former sorrows when good news comes in the midst of grief. He excludes everything except the good news he has heard. He gets strength to do good in the future. In his joy, his spirit is rejuvenated. So also did you receive a rejuvenation of soul at the sight of these benefits. Now the fact that you saw her sitting on a couch means the position is secure, for the couch had four feet and was securely fixed, just as the world is supported by four elements. Therefore, those who repent thoroughly will become young and firmly established. I mean those who repent with their whole heart. Here you have the complete revelation. Do not ask for anything more about a revelation, but if anything is necessary, it will be revealed to you. Fourth Vision Brethren, the vision which I saw twenty days after the former had been made is a type of the persecution to come. I was leaving for the country by the Via Campana. The place is about a mile off the public road and easily reached. So, as I was walking alone, I thanked the Lord for the revelations and visions he had shown me through his holy church and begged him to round them out. I begged him to strengthen me and to grant repentance to his servants who had stumbled for the glory of his great and glorious name. For he deemed me worthy to have these marvelous secrets pointed out to me. As I was praising and giving thanks to him, an echo, as it were, of my voice answered me. Do not be divided in purpose, Hermes. I had begun to weigh this and to say to myself, How can I be divided in purpose after having been so firmly established by the Lord and after having seen glorious things? So I approached a little closer, brethren, and behold, I saw a cloud of dust reaching up, as it were, to the heavens. 
I then began to say to myself, Cattle are now approaching and raising a cloud, six hundred feet away from me. As it was getting ever bigger, I suspected it was some supernatural apparition. The sun shone a little, and behold, I saw a huge beast, something like a whale, with fiery locusts coming out of its mouth. The size of the beast was about a hundred feet, and its head seemed to be of earthenware. As I began to cry and to ask the Lord to deliver me from the beast, I recalled the remark I had heard, Hermes, do not fear in your heart. I put on then the faith of the Lord, and recalling the wonderful things he had taught me, I faced the beast with courage. Now the beast came on with a rush capable of destroying a city. I came close to it, and for all its size, the monster only stretched itself on the ground without doing anything except project its tongue. In fact, there was not stir in it at all until I had passed by. I came close to it, and for all its size, the monster only stretched itself on the ground without doing anything except project its tongue. In fact, there was not stir in it at all until I had passed by. There were four colors on the head of the beast. Black, then the color of fire and blood, next gold, finally white. After I had gone approximately thirty feet past the beast, behold, there met me a virgin, decked out like a lady coming from a bridal chamber, all in white and with white sandals. She was veiled to the forehead, and her headdress was a turban, but her hair was white. I knew from former visions that it was the church, and so I became more cheerful. She saluted me with the words, Greetings, my good man. My salutation in turn was, Greetings, lady. For answer, she said to me, Have you met anything? Lady, I said to her, A huge beast met me, capable of destroying peoples, but by the power of the Lord and his abundant mercy I escaped from it. Yes, indeed, she said, you escaped, because you cast your care on God, and you opened up your heart to the Lord in the assurance that you can be saved by nothing except his great and glorious name. Hence the Lord has sent his angel who is set over the beasts, whose name is Segri. He has shut its mouth, that it may not hurt you. By your faith, you have escaped great persecution, because at the sight of such a great monster you were not swayed by doubt. Go off, then, and explain to the Lord's elect his wonders, and tell them that this beast is a symbol of the great persecution that is to come. If you prepare in advance and repent to the Lord with all your hearts, you will be able to escape the persecution, provided your hearts become pure and sinless, and you serve your Lord blamelessly the rest of the days of your life. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will set them straight. Put your faith in the Lord, you men of divided purpose, because he can do all things and turns aside his wrath from you, while he sends scourges on you who doubt in your heart. Alas for those who hear these remarks and disobey them, it were better for them that they had not been born. I asked her a question about the four colors on the head of the beast. She answered and said, Still curious about such matters. Yes, lady, I said. Tell me what this means. I will tell you, she said. The black is this world in which you live. The color of fire and blood stands for this, that this world must be destroyed in fire and blood. You who flee this world are the golden section, for just as gold is tried by fire and becomes useful, so also you who live in the world are tried in it. So then, you who remain in it and pass through the flames will be purified, for just as gold casts off its dross, 
so you also will cast off all sorrow and tribulation, becoming pure and useful for the building of the tower. Finally, the white section is the world to come, in which the elect of God dwell. For those chosen by God for eternal life will be without spot and pure. Do not let up then, but speak to the ears of God's saints. You have also the symbol of the persecution that is to come. But if you have a good will, it will not mean a thing. Remember what was written before. With this she went away, but I did not see where she went, for there was a cloud, and I turned back in fear, thinking that the beast was coming. Fifth Vision The Angel of Repentance As I was praying in my house and sat on my bed, a man of glorious appearance entered. He was dressed like a shepherd, a white skin wrapped around him, a bag over his shoulders, and a staff in his hand. He greeted me, and I returned his greeting. Sitting beside me, he said immediately, I have been sent by the most venerable angel to dwell with you for the rest of your life. Thinking he was here to tempt me, I said to him, Who are you? I know to whom I was entrusted. He said, Do you not recognize me? No, I said. I am the shepherd to whom you have been entrusted. As he was still talking, his form changed, and I recognized that he was the person to whom I had been entrusted. I was confounded at once, and fear took hold of me. I was completely overcome with grief for having answered him so wickedly and senselessly. But he answered and said to me, Do not be confounded, but draw strength in the command I am going to give you. For I have been sent, he said, to show you once more all that you saw before, the most important matters, those useful to you. First of all, write my commands in parables. Write the rest in the order I shall indicate to you. The reason, he said, why I command you to write first the commands in parables is that you may have them to read at once and then keep them. So I wrote the commands and parables as he bade me. If you hear and keep them and walk in them and fulfill them in a pure heart, you will receive from the Lord what he promised you. But if you hear them and do not repent, or even add to your sins, you will receive the contrary from the Lord. All this the shepherd, the angel of repentance, commanded me to write as follows. This has been The Shepherd of Hermes, Visions, translated by Joseph M. F. Marik, S.J., Ph.D., narrated by James T. Majewski, copyright 1947 by the Catholic University of America Press, production copyright 2024 by Trinity Communications. This podcast is a production of CatholicCulture.org. Check out our other podcasts, including Way of the Fathers, an early church history podcast hosted by Jim Papandrea, Criteria, the Catholic Film Podcast, featuring deep analysis of great films from a Catholic perspective, and the Catholic Culture Podcast, an interview show exploring Catholic arts, culture, and issues. You'll find all of this and more at CatholicCulture.org.